The unfortunate thing is, though, is that's all they took time for. That was their life. It was just eating and sleeping and going through life without regard to God. My dad didn't get saved until he was 34 years old. You listen to him preach, you thought he'd be saved when he was five. <laughs> we live our lives without the consciousness of God, always in control. And we get bent out of shape because things happen when if we would just relinquish the control and each day we would start the day and we would say, God, I need your help today to help me today to do what you choose for my life, not what I choose for my life. Go back to our text and go to Romans chapter 8 and look in verse 4. Here's one of the goals that God has for you and I. He writes that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. First, he doesn't want us to be under condemnation. See, the, the, the reason why people get upset at God is they don't understand that God doesn't want to condemn us. He doesn't want the consequence. How many of you were glad when you were able to get, discipline your kids? I mean, you loved it. You tried to tell them, and you know, you said, I, look, I love you, and I'm doing this. The kids said, please don't love me so much. You know, you know. Um, but you, you, and you said, I, I'm doing this because I love you. And they, you know, and the kid, yeah, right, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Um, you really did. If you enjoyed punishing your children, you were sick. I, I'm, I'm very serious. If you enjoyed inflicting punishment upon your children, you were a sick person. And if you think God enjoys afflicting you and I as his children, you misunderstand God completely. God doesn't want to punish us. He doesn't want to chasten us. But the Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth or scourgeth and chasteneth every son whom he receiveth. Or he chastens those whom he loves and he scourgeth every son whom whom he receiveth. There isn't a Christian who lives in this world or any time in life that is not chastened by their heavenly father. And all God is doing is trying to get our attention to say, give me the controls. Give me the reins. Just trust me. And that's the most, one of the most difficult things for all of us in this room. Every one of us. He wants to fulfill the righteousness of the law in us. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to be different. He wants us to, to fulfill the things that Christ did. He wants people to see us as, as being holy people. Verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. Now, <laughs> any of your kids ever done anything silly? You would say another word, but we got kids here, so I won't, won't say the word. Starts with S, though. Um, and it ends with a D and has a P in the middle of it. Any of you ever had it? And, and you, you just can't believe they did what they did. And you know yourself in your life, you did the same things when you were their age to your parents. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. If you knew that your children were going to do something that was going to jeopardize their lives and was going to take their lives, how many of you would step in? Yeah? No. 
I don't care what anybody else does, but you're not getting in that car. You're not going there. You're not doing that. I don't want something to happen to you. Now, this is what we don't understand with God. God has the same feelings. He feels exactly the same way. He, so that is why he's trying to communicate to us, why he's trying to get our attention, why he's trying to say, get on a different wavelength, get on my page. Stop thinking those thoughts, stop going that way, stop doing your own thing. It's only going to lead to death. It is going to destroy your life. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, is life and peace. Leave your finger there, and if you think God has changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament, go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. I, I, I'm taking a, a risk here. I'm, I'm depending upon my memory, which sometimes is good and sometimes is not. And I'm just about to determine that it is not. Unfortunately, I have a concordance here. <clears throat> the passage is Deuteronomy, and it says, Choose life or choose death. 3019, verse 15. Thank you. I'll let my wife, I'll let her write my next message. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. And here's what God says. He's saying this to his children, to the children of Israel. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk his way in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply and the Lord thy God will bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt draw away and worship other gods and serve me uh, and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that, that, that ye shall surely what? Wow. It's not any different what he's saying in verse... Number five of Romans eight. He's saying if you're gonna if you're gonna live carnally minded, this is what's gonna happen to you. But if you live spiritually minded, it's gonna make mean life. It's gonna mean my blessing. It's gonna mean a whole different life. <clears throat> Let's read a little further and then we're done. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Who wouldn't want that? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That means that you actually, when you subject yourself to being carnally minded, you become an enemy of God. You put yourself in an adversarial position. For it is not subject to the law of God. That's your mind. You're not willing to submit yourself to the word of God. Neither indeed can be. You cannot be subject to it because you, you are in the flesh. Verse 9, uh, verse 8, and we'll end, we end here. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When in Rome, walk in the Spirit.